Another eye charger not working. The customer says this one doesn't even come on. He was using it and then next time we went to use it, there was nothing. So uh, let's just uh, put some power on it. And he's right. Uh, doesn't come on at all. Now, uh, I'll take it apart. Uh, these do have fuses and uh, voltage uh, of FET control in the input power. Which could have blown. There's no reason for it to blow unless you short circuit something. So it's a matter of taking it apart and having a look at the components first. Taking it apart comes apart pretty easy. The only uh, bit you have to, uh, which is quite difficult putting back in, is the ribbon cable, which goes in there. Anyway, uh, do a bit of a close up here. Just behind here, the the plus wire, there's um, some fuses. A bit hard to see, uh, but you can just see one there. So we connect the uh, wire uh, to a meter. I use the old-fashioned analog meter because I find it's uh, very useful to see what the needle's doing. Uh, so, I've connected to the positive, and there's the positive coming in. You see the, um, maybe I'll put it the other side. Needle go up, that's on resistance reading. Now it goes through those resistors, so just go on the other side of the resistors. Nothing. The resist, um, the fuses, sorry, the fuses are blown. But, they don't normally just blow on their own, so I'm going to have to check the various FETs around on both sides to make sure and find out if anything else is blown. Um, doing those fuses is a bit of a pain. They're behind this very uh, big soldered joint. You need a very good iron to get that out. Uh, but the, the uh, fuses can be changed quite easily um, if you've got some that is. Also you can see there are some more fuses which often blow Let's just get it in the right here on the inputs there and on the on the other side the bank of fuses here. They look alright. Uh, it's easy to check them. You can just put the meter across. They're fine. They're fine. So to get to the have a look at the components on the other side, it's best to take the heat sink off. And then you can actually see if the, and measure them and check them. When taking the heat sink off, uh, make sure that all these they've got insulators that they come with, and you put them back on. Make sure you keep the insulator. And there's one in there too, and the one at the front here is not got an insulator, but it's. Um, got a washer on it so I've got the heat sink off just make sure when you take the heat sink off that uh, you, you see all these insulator uh, heat sink transfer insulators keep them on for when you put it back now you've got um, the left and the right channel now you see it's pretty symmetrical which is good which means that you can check all these FETs and uh, compare if necessary now here's the um, power one. That the power goes through this one, and sometimes it blows out. Um, there's quite a big blob of solder here, which I don't know what's happened with it when they manufactured it or what, or whether it's got hot and started melting. Um, also, when you look at these components, sometimes you can see they've changed colour. Uh, this one's looking a bit black. Um, Anyway, first of all, the power comes through this one. So with this meter, again, you can check FETs. You can check whether they're not going to be short circuit. Uh, so you can check whether they are or not. Well, looking at this one, uh, you can go on the case, which is connected to the center leg. And then you can check the other two legs. And they should, they should not be uh, shorted. You can do change the polarity round. You might... You, you will get a little bit of um, 
there's capacitors and things and you get a bit of resistance one way like that so that one even though it's got that solder there it looks good um, you can check all these others uh, quite easily just going on the legs and then making sure there's no short circuit center outer center and they're all testing good you can test these two middle outer now go to the other side um, I'll just do these ones first just to show that they're, they're good and then this one center and then leg on the right oh leg on the right short circuit now these are I think are in uh, in parallel so it, one of these let's do this blackened one yeah zero across that leg and this one here again that one's got short on all three legs so something's happened here uh, possibly one of these has blown out or more than one um, looking more closely this one is dark so what are what you have to do they're very difficult to uh, get out of the board you have to cut the legs off and this, when you put a new one in you can solder back on the legs trying to suck all the solder out of these boards around all these small components to get the holes is you often create more damage than uh, it's worth the effort also checking on the other side the board uh, there's a power diode here and that has gone short circuit the one on the other side is still fine so that um, yeah that often blows out when the FET blows out right I've taken out uh, two of the FETs that were there they're both uh, the same 3205Zs uh, um, I took one out and it checked it if you check, look on the meter if I connect across the three legs you've got uh, a short to the middle of the short there and a short on the on that one is short 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 all three are gone on that one and on this one uh, that's the middle one uh, that side's okay but this side short so um, they've gone uh, the other the other two the other ones down here test okay now I've taken off the um, taken off the positive so I can get the resist the th three fuses underneath um, you can see them there one two three they're 25 amp ratings so at 75 amps is uh, amazing that uh, they can blow out um, you have to unsolder this which is not easy to do it takes a hell of a lot of heat to get it to get at those those three there uh, it's just a, a matter of doing the fusing first you could bypass those fuses I guess it's a safety thing though <laughs> didn't really help because uh, these still blew out um, anyway I have the parts that I need to fix this uh, you can buy the, the FETs quite cheaply um, but there are two versions of this uh, this MOSFET you can get a 75 amp one or 110 amps uh, you should try and get the 110 amp one it doesn't cost any more uh, it's got a slightly different part number uh, IRF 3205Z PBF on the end the standard one Z you might have to look around for it but 110 amps uh, same size 
just a better rating. Now the, the fuses are more difficult, rather than get those very small 25 amp ones, they're very difficult to solder, I bought some uh, 40 amp fast acting fuses. They're slightly bigger, which is better actually, because they're slightly easier to solder in. Um, they're a bit bigger, but it's going to be fairly easy to put them in, because I can put them, there's plenty of room here on the board, I had to put them sideways. Uh, there's there's a nice bit um, sh bit of uh, tracking to solder to, and a big blob here. And then I, I'll have to solder them in and solder the wire on top of the edges. Now two of them, uh, 40 amps is 80 amps. The original fuses were 325, so 75 amps. So it does the same job. I think it'd be much easier uh, to put them in. Then those tiny little ones, the two FETs I've got to put in, of course, and then uh, can proceed to uh, power it up and test it. I've soldered the two fuses into position to the large track at the back, and uh, here, they're just above the, the circular pad that was originally there and I'm going to solder the positive wire then onto the top of these uh, off top of these two where they're just joined there soldered the positive onto the join of the two fuses preparing the FET to solder you're going to solder them onto the existing uh, legs that just you cut off uh, now how to do that well it's quite difficult to, you want to get a uh, good contact so what you're going to do is uh, bend the legs down and then cut them off and then push them up against these and solder them together now when you bend the legs down on these transistors it's best not to bend them right next to the plastic uh, that sometimes uh, creates a weak joint and they can actually break off it's best to um, try and uh, bend them in a very slight curve and leave a tiny little bit of the metal just poking out before it bends down the leg and then you'll cut them off uh, flush with the bottom so that it can lay down uh, flat because when this is screwed to the heatsink all these must be flat otherwise they're not going to contact the heatsink properly. Right, I've uh, bent them over a slight curvature just a little bit so that there's no strain and no cracking oh. and then I've cut them off uh, flush with the bottom I just check that it fits nice and flush and then we're going to slide them up to the other legs there, hold it in position and solder them together. I've soldered the two uh, FETs that were blown into position so um, everything hopefully now is going to be okay. Double check the meter you might as well that everything's good. Check where the blown FETs were before Everything's looking good. Uh, you can check that the positive and negative are not shorted together. And check the positive comes into the fit. It does. Time to check out the eye charger. I've reassembled it. Uh, I could have checked it without the heat sink, but it's much easier to screw the heat sink on. I'll, I'll have to take it back apart. And I'm assuming it's going to be good now. Um, connected the uh, ribbon cable back up which is always a bit of a fiddle anyway rather than just plug it into a 12 volt source and bang it on and hope for the best uh, I use a, a power supply with limited uh, amps so if it's got a fault it's not just going to burn up so uh, what I do is set the um, voltage uh, about 12 and uh, turn the current down and then we turn it on and you can turn the current up slightly until it comes on so just a small bit of 
Currently it has come on with no short circuit, so that's good, it's powered up. Uh, the readings are showing correctly, temperature, input voltage. Uh, you always get some sort of um, weird voltage sometimes showing on these things. Anyway, now to um, I'll set it up to do a a charge. Um, we we'll start at low amps first and just make sure it charges and discharges. Uh, I think this was the channel that was burnt out. I'll test both channels, so I'm just going to do that now. I plug the battery in and I've set it to one and a half amps so we we'll just uh, start and see what happens I usually want to run yes it's coming up to two one and a half I set it to so it's come up to one and a half so we know that it's working. Discharge test as well, and then I'll test the other channel before we go to high power. Initially we just do five, I think. It ramps up slowly. So I'm just going to check the other channel, which was not the one that was um, blown, just to make sure that uh, both channels are working. After uh, testing uh, left and right channels on low power, I'm now connect up to uh, a high power power supply. I've set the charge to 10 amps balance, and um, we'll uh, we'll check it now. Ten amps charge on the channel that was repaired, and then I'll, I'll do a test at a high power discharge as well. So it's ramping up to ten amps, it's balancing. Just checking the charge rate. The customer wants eighteen amps charge rate, so I put it to eighteen. Uh, the battery's almost charged anyway, so um, it went up to 18. Check internal resistance, front screen. Yeah, that's working. Just check the other channel. It's discharging the other channel. It's uh, reading 10 amps discharge, and I check it on this uh, ammeter. It's reading 10 amps, so it is working properly. Fans are really going now. You can check the various data here. Check the cell voltages, the internal resistance. They're all working. Screw the bottom of the case back on. Uh, I've done all the tests on both channels, charge and discharge. Uh, it's working fine. So um, that's finished now.